Oh, we all love a transfer special, don't we? So let's get into one. And after winning Ligue 1 last season and beaten semi-finalists in the Champions League as well, we need to strengthen the squad so that we're able to go one better in the Champions League while also retaining Ligue 1 against the juggernauts that are PSG. <laughs> to the video then folks and let's get to it because I have already got some transfers to tell you about players coming in there's three of them coming in well two that's coming in and one that's coming in and then going straight back out again but either way when I look at the team we've got if we so I'd already cleared this if we go to our assistant manager to click to pick without restrictions see how close he gets I mean Vandenberg isn't in my first team that's Estevé he's got sat yeah I agree with that Usually we'd have Sivertson in there, but Russo, yeah. Other than that, yeah, I think he's got the, the first team bang on. Now, when I look at this team, I don't see a great deal of positions that we need to improve on. There is a possibility that Vandenberg might be leaving this season. He is also wanted and on transfer. And there's a Saudi Arabian team interested as well. Desiree Dewey is wanted by Manchester United and Fiorentina. I'd rather he didn't go. I mean, look at how good he is. Look at how good he is. Like I say, I'd rather he didn't go. I'd love to keep him. But AS Monaco is quite low down on the food chain, especially compared to the likes of Manchester United and Saudi Arabia, if they become interested. Maxime Esteve, of course, our star centre-back of last season. He, by far and away, was our best centre-back. Barracina was very good as well, but Esteve just done so well. Eight goals last season, six of those in the league. If we look at his actual league form... 33 games, six goals at 7.10. And we brought him in on a free transfer. Let's not forget about that as well. So yeah, Maxime Esve, but he is at the age of 28. He's going to be 29 in a week's time, as it turns out. So he's wanted by Fiorentina and Lorient. I think we could probably fight them off in terms of keeping him. And hopefully we can do that. But he is another one that could potentially leave. He has got a valuation of around 60 million. When you compare that to the fact he's got a high valuation and Desiree Dewey, who has got a valuation of around 55 million. I mean, that's 115 million just for the two of those on their own. Then if we look at Vandenberg as well, a valuation of 66 million, we're getting up towards 200 million pounds worth of players leaving the club already. Sardella is wanted as well by Leeds on a transfer. He's got a valuation of around 35 million. So now we are over 200 million. If we look further down our list, I mean, Katagas, we, we are going to try and get shot of him, even if it's just on loan. Then, the same with Fernandez and Adils as well. Hopefully we can get them out on loan as well. So yeah, there's a possibility of some players actually leaving the club. If we have a look at the squad status, at our homegrown quota we won't include Amal Bora because we're looking at getting rid of him he's really not good enough I'd, rather than playing him I'd rather play someone like Gutierrez that could become slightly better and at, in fact even looking around in our development centre see if there's anyone that is even better than Gutierrez we've got Benny and Ganga who again as a central midfielder can do a job for us and got a bit of potential Usman Keita as well, that plays a slightly more advanced role. He's better than Nganga as well. So we'll, we'll probably keep these three young players. So that's three at club anyway. Then we've got Espinosa, who makes up our fifth at club player. So that's, like I say, not including Bora. Then we've got the likes of Russo, Marie, Dewey, Jawa, backup goalkeeper, Estevé and Fafana, that are all trained in nations. So not including adults. That's six players that are trained in nation as well as four players. So homegrown-wise, we're pretty okay, but we do need to kind of look at the fact that if anyone from trained at club goes out of the squad, somebody else trained at club needs to come in. So at the moment, we have a squad of... Have we gone down far enough? Yep. 28 people. We're going to take off one, two, three from that. So we've got a squad of 25. So it pretty much is, in terms of homegrown, if they're homegrown and they go out then they'll need to be homegrown and coming back in. Let's get into the transfers we've made at the moment. And they are future transfers and not actually been completed yet. So let's have a look at future transfers. And Kenny Leonard, 
I think you already knew about from Saint Etienne for 17 and a half million pounds. He is obviously homegrown in nation. He's French, 21 years old, not playing for the international team at the moment. He can play the Mazala and the advanced playmaker role, so he's pretty much cover for Dewey and Chukwamaker. Just adds a bit, a bit more numbers, a bit more strength, and plus his physicals are absolutely incredible. I love his physicals. Them kind of physicals suggest success at um, in, in football manager, and to the point where if we click him as an advanced playmaker on attack, yes, his dribbling needs some improvement. But looking at the rest of him, I mean, he's yellow for technique, he's yellow for flair, yellow for access, acceleration, yellow for agility. He's got the attributes to be that attacking playmaker. So if Desiree Douay does leave this summer, he is a possibility of someone that's actually going to take his place. He's got an A rating from our staff. He's two and a half star at the moment with three to three and a half star potential. I'm really excited about having him in. Andrade we'll get to in a moment, but Peter Kraev is another young player, 18-year-old centre-back, Bulgarian, has played seven times for Bulgaria already. He's a backup young option that, you know, as you can see by that, could potentially be a five-star player in the future. Probably wouldn't get as high as, or any higher than four stars. But when you consider, again, his attributes, especially his physicals, six foot four as a centre-back, I love that as a height for a centre-back. He's got decent heading and jumping reach already. Hopefully they will improve as well, along with his marking, which is 12, his tackling, which is 14, his passing, which is 14. He fits in as a ball-playing defender quite comfortably, and he would absolutely fit in potentially as Vandenberg's replacement. Although, if we go to the tactic, outside of Vandenberg, yes, we've got Sardella that can play in the centre as well, but he could actually be a missing piece of the jigsaw that we actually need. So, yeah, happy with that signing. Two young upcoming players. Then, talking of young, we've got Andrade for £16.25 million from BOT, BOT. 18-year-old Brazilian, obviously not made any caps yet for Brazil. Central midfielder, Mazalas, an advanced playmaker as well. Can also play the central midfield and a deep line playmaker role. 16 for passing, 16 for technique, 16 off the ball, 17 teamwork, 17 decisions, 16 balance, 16 stamina. He has got some really good attributes. And if we were going to play him in, say, the Mazala role on support, you look at the attributes. Long shots does need to improve. Vision needs to improve as well. But other than that, he is rock solid in all of it. And I kind of see in the future these positions here being Andrade and Leonard in the chocolate maker and do a role. So that is where we're kind of at at the moment. I'm going to play through until I have something interesting to tell you. And what we'll do is we click on here as well as we've got some emails just to quickly go through. The club vision and expectation meeting, be competitive in the Champions League, qualify for the Champions League. They're happy with that. We'll agree to that. We want better, but we'll agree to it. Um, just for remember, is excellent. Manager sport is very good as well. End of season team meeting. Right, let's see if I can get this right and not make a complete and utter royal hash of it. They want us to, well, we go to League 1, come back from the breaks, we're going down, well, qualify for the Champions League. That's the one. There you go. We got it right. And then that'll be it for now. We'll leave them happy. I made a right balls up of that in my most recent Barcelona Let's Play rebuild thing. Right, just clicking through those. That's all wonderful. We'll request that. Right, I'll come back to you again when I've got some more information about anyone in and out or anything other news that might be of interest. Right, here we go. End of season review. I'll be honest, I completely forgot about the end of season review. So there's a league and trophy. It's quite a nice little trophy, actually, when you look at it. Right, let's have a look at the new arrivals. Quite looking forward to this. So Giannis Katagas was first in. Barely played for us. 8.10 in the game. Maybe we should play him a little bit more often. He's only 23 years of age, of course. Then you've got Desiree Doué came in from Rennes for £28 million. Phenomenal success. 14 goals, 10 assists from the central midfield role at 7.27. He, For me, he's a contender for sign of the season. Let me know in the comments what your sign of the season is. 
But for me, he's going to be very close. But we have made some exceptional signings. Justin Bengui Jow has only made one appearance, 7.20, 3 million from Leon. He's a backup goalkeeper. He fulfills the homegrown at Nation role, which kind of feels a bit cheaty. But I always do that. I like to have a, my backup goalkeeper be homegrown, either at Nation or at club, just to help fulfill those um, quotas, really. Then Giacomo Carnavalli, another one alongside Desiree Dewey, that kind of feels like he's signed of the season. £30 million from Roma, 47 appearances, two goals, 16 assists. I mean, he, that was phenomenal at 7.14. Then we've got Antoine Marie from the FC Nantes second team, £62 million. He's made 49 appearances at 7.12. Again, he's like them three, like Douay and Carnavalli. He, I mean, he is officially our signing of the season. Um, if you look at what the board have said, we are concerned about the potential extra fees of 12 million, which could end up making the deal very costly. I mean, look at what he's doing for us. I think he's worth it. Stéphane Rousseau from Leicester for 40 million. 15 starts, 22 sub appearances. That's 37 in total. 11 goals, 6 assists at 7.11. If it wasn't for Sivertson, he would absolutely be starting for us on that right wing. Salvatore Rustignoli from Sassuolo for 18.25 million. 36 starts, 8 sub appearances, 9 goals, 15 assists. Only second only to um, Carnavalli for the assist charts at 7.09. Another massive success for me, Rustignoli. Maxime Estevé, a free transfer from Liverpool. 46 appearances, all starts, 8 goals, no assists at 7.08. Plus he's part of if not the best, and definitely one of the best defences in Ligue 1. Oscar Sivertson from Lyon for 52 million. 42 appearances, 35 of those starts. 14 goals, 8 assists at 7.08. And Carney Chukwameka, 32.5 million from Middlesbrough. 38 appearances, 3 goals, 9 assists at 7.08. I'm struggling to find a dud sign in here. I mean, Castagas, or Katagas rather, you could probably say, is but again we've not really given him much of a chance i say we i've not given him much of a chance i just don't see a dud signing out of all of those and for me personally if i'm going to pick sign of the season it's between carnavalli and dewey for me but i'm probably going to go carnavalli because i love seeing my fullbacks getting forward and 16 assists that is phenomenal and yeah the ball give him an a plus as well in terms of transfers out let's have a look at who's done what and where Abel Ruiz has gone to Al Itihad, 49.5 million for Abel Ruiz. That was a phenomenal amount of money for him. I can't believe we got it. To be fair, he's gone on to score 29 goals from 40 appearances with three assists at 7.47. He's do, having a great fun time out in Saudi Arabia. Vanderson has gone to Villarreal for 25 million. A regular start for him, probably started in pretty much every game. Three goals, eight assists at 7.15. He's doing really well for himself. As is Rolly KMB. At Rems, Alexander Bobek has gone to Saudi Arabia as well. He's been playing regularly. Bart Verbruggen at Liverpool, £40 million, 56 appearances. He's obviously not scored or assisted, but 6.91 is decent for a goalkeeper. Muniz has gone to Brentford. He's starting regularly. Moussa Barai doing a little bit at Toulouse, not really set the place on fire. Daniel Mahia, who is a good young player, £7 million we got for him. He's been a bit part player at Sheffield United. And looking down the list, there's not really anyone else. We've got a couple of players that we've sold for a couple of million here. Young talents that, yeah, we just got rid of because they weren't ever going to have a future here. Moving on to a season to remember. And boy, was it a season to remember. Qualifying for the UEFA Champions League was a board expectation. We won the league with one draw and two defeats all season. Goal difference of plus 69. 94 points, six points ahead of PSG. Bearing in mind, out of them three games that we've dropped results in, one of them was the first game of the season against Nice. And after that, we then lost to PSG here. We drew to Bordeaux there and then went on a, another phenomenal run right up to the end of the season. Absolutely loved winning that league. We've got to try and win it again this season. There's not pressure on us to do it, but I want to retain it, quite honestly, because I don't like PSG. And we don't like Nice because they're our local rivals. 90% of the average home attendance. Erez Levi is a top scorer with 20 goals. When we go into the Champions League, I mean, 
we lost to Galatasaray, we lost to Villarreal, we drew with Chelsea in the first leg of the quarterfinal there. When we got to the semi-final against Liverpool, after we won that game 2-0 at Anfield, I actually did start to believe that we could win the Champions League. Then we played the home leg and boy did Liverpool teach us a lesson. 5-1, that's the heaviest defeat I think I've potentially had in my career in the unemployed journeyman. It was hard. Levi was their top goal scorer with 10 goals in the Champions League. And in the French Cup, again, we didn't really do a great deal. We hammered a non-league team and then lost to PSG. And Cordoba was our top goal scorer on five goals. The board are very disappointed in me for that. In terms of moments to remember, the biggest win was the 11-1 win against a non-league team in the French Cup. Then the match to remember was a 2-0 win against PSG. Levi and Chukwamaker getting on the score sheet in that early doors in August. Then goal of the season was Chukwamaker provides a perfect finish to an excellent team move by scoring a deftly executed finish from 19 metres. The game again against PSG that we won 2-0. We look at the finances. We're a continental four-star reputation club. No new sponsorship deals, but sponsorship has gone up by a couple of million. Our broadcast revenue has gone up by a few thousand pounds. The corporate and hospitality has gone up by about 30,000, 30, 300,000, something like that. Competition prize money has gone up significantly by nearly 50 million. And match day commercial and retail has gone up by about 120,000 pounds. 12.3 million pounds made in merchandise sales. 26,292 shirts have been sold. Erez Levi, a top one. Musa, Chukra Maker, Dewey and Andre, Andre, Andre Santos. In amongst all that as well, love seeing Levi as a top selling shirt. Oh, look at that. Andre Santos in defensive midfield is the only person that's not got a rated of 7.01 or above. The team of the season, Marie in goal, Carnavalli and Espinosa in the wing-back positions, Esteban Barachina in central, central defence. Andre Santos, Chukwa Maker and Dewey in midfield. Rustig Nelly Simpson out wide with Levi up top. Wouldn't agree, disagree with that in the slightest. That is the team we mainly went with. In terms of record breakers, and we have had some record breakers in a record breaking season. Most goals by a player in a season, uh, but by a player in a match, sorry, Nahul Cordoba for his five goals in the French Cup against a non-league team. Most goals by a player in a league match, Erez Levi for his four goals. Then most assists by a player in a season, Carnavalli for 16. Most clean sheets by a player in a season, Antoine Marie for his 25. And highest transfer fee paid, Sivertson, £52 million. I don't think we're going to be beating that this season. In terms of the club awards, Desiree Doué has won Fans Player of the Season. Salvatore Rusignoli with the Young Player of the Season. Sign of the Season, Antoine Marie. Goal of the Season, Chuck Wamaker. Top goal scorer, Erez Levi, 30 in total. Most assists is Carnavalli with 16. Most Player of the Match awards is Desiree Doué with 8. Highest average rating is Desiree Dewey with 7.3. And most passes completed per 90 minutes is Hugo Barracina with 71. I've won no awards. I mean, how have I not won an award in a season we've won the league? I mean, that, that just feels wrong. History in the making, that's the league table. That's our league and title. And AS Monaco owe their title to powering through the middle of the season. That really set them on their way. I mean, I would say the middle is probably our weakest part, but Okay. Manager timeline is what the manager timeline is. Having a look at some of this, is this going to... So, uh, players inducted into the Monaco overall best 11. I mean, I don't know who this guy is. I don't think he was here when I was here. Not that I can remember anyway. No, I don't think he was. We've been here for the last two seasons. So, yeah, no. Um, Monaco best 11, where are they now? Don't really care about that. Same with that one. Looking at this, though, Levi is already in our... Best 11 up front. Navarro, we've already got the, still got the club. Musa, Fafana is still here. Enrique is still here as well. So there's a few players. We're, I mean, we're obviously familiar with Salisu, Singo, Vanderson, Golovin, Mbolo. We're, we're familiar with all of those as well. So yeah, that is that. That was the end of season review. And now it's time to try and make a difference to the squad that we've got. <music> Okay, so just give me a moment because I've been looking at the job centre. Now, I'm not in any hurry to leave AS Monaco. I'm quite happy to stay here, see if we can retain Ligon, see if we can win the Champions League. But it's in the back of my mind that I just don't think we're ever going to have the players or the money to really win 
um, League One, uh, not League One, the Champions League. So I've been having a look around on the job centre just to see if any jobs are available because I'm kind of thinking in order to win the European Champions League, I might need to be at a club that stands a better chance of winning the Champions League. And I've had a little scout through and I've come across Borussia Dortmund. Now, Borussia Dortmund are a powerhouse of German football, obviously. You know, you've got Bayern Munich, you've got Leverkusen, you've got maybe RB Leipzig. Outside of that in the Bundesliga, you don't really have a great deal in there. You know, like I say, Bayern, Leipzig, um, Leverkusen, then Dortmund shockingly finishing outside of the European places last season. It's another 34-match season. They're certainly better than Wolfsburg, Berlin, Hoffenheim and Stuttgart. And yeah, I just... So I had a look at them. The finances are okay, which doesn't fill me with a great deal of confidence. It might make me think we're going from one team that's struggling financially to another. If you look at someone like Leipzig, for example, let's have a look at them. Their finances are secure. Let's have a look at the top team, Bayern Munich, always the top team in Germany on most seasons. Okay, to be fair, it might not be the worst of choices. I mean, the finances are apparently the same as Bayern Munich. By the way, I love that away shirt. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking at it and I'm, I'm in an hour as to whether or not I should apply for the Dortmund job. Apparently, Sergei Jakarovic is the favourite to get it. I mean, I've got better attributes than him, I'm not going to lie. He's been a manager of that team, that team, Maribor, that team, that team. Atlanta, he's been at Atlanta for four seasons. I don't know if he's ever really won anything, but he doesn't strike me as being that good, if I'm being quite honest. Do you know what? I think we're going to apply for it. Let's view the job advert. Develop players using the club's youth system. Sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. Do not sign players over the age of 30. Develop players, players using the club's youth system. Play attacking football. Sign German players. That annoys me, that sign German players. one. State-of-the-art training facility. is a £3.3 million wage bill. And OK finances. Oh, do we go for it? Because I really think we stand a better chance. I mean, obviously not this season. If we go to them, see, this is the thing. If we go to Dortmund, we're committing to at least two seasons because this season is going to be about getting into the Champions League and then next season it's going to be about trying to win it. Whereas at least with Monaco, this season we could win the Champions League. You know, we got to the semi-finals last season. Oh, I don't know what to do. There's such a part that's telling me I've done what I can at Monaco. It's now time to move on. And it would be another nation. Do you know what? We're going for it. This is a journeyman. And we've been to Japan. We've been to France. It's now time to potentially go to Germany, if they want us, that is. So we've applied for the job at Dortmund. There's not really any more in here that take my fancy. I mean, Lazio, they're a team. I don't think they're really favourites for... The Champions League, OK finances. I mean, they, you look at their Serie A record, second, third, third, they won it in 25-26, third, third, sixth, and then last season third. So they're not actually a bad team, Lazio. I don't, I, I just don't know about them. I, I'm not, I'm not so, if we have a look at their age profile of their players as well, I mean, actually, I've got, Quite a few young players in there, to be fair to them. And they don't seem to have an issue with homegrown situations where they've got plenty of homegrown players. So, hmm, do we go to Lazio in Italy? Or do we go to Dortmund? I mean, that's providing they want me, by the way. Where's the job advert? So, sign players under the age of 23, play defensively solid football. Play high tempo pressing football, make the most of set pieces, play possession football, play. Def Why do they want defensively solid? I mean, you can play defensively solid football without being defensive. We've proven that. Managers cannot work for two teams in the same division in the same season. Okay. 
their wage bill is 2.8 million per week. Ours, wrong one, is 2.3. So they're not, you know, Dortmund have an extra one million pound a week wages. Hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. No, not that one. Where, where is it? Job Centre. There you go. Well, we've applied for the Dortmund one. Do we apply for the Lazio one as well? Would you guys hate me if I... See, what I want to do is I want to win the Champions League in Europe and then I want to move on to either Argentina or Mexico because Argentina is obviously the South American Champions League and Mexico is the North American Champions League. But I'm kind of... Oh, yeah. Lazio are kind of tempting me, I must admit. If we have a look at Syria, they're not in the Champions League this season by the looks of it, unless the coefficient thing drags them in. But they are in Europe. So there is a possibility. We, we can actually get the Europa League under our belt as well. Do you know what? Let's view the job advert. Declare interest and apply for job. Right, there's two that we could potentially get then. We could be going to the Olimpico in Lazio or we could be going to the Yellow Wall in Dortmund. I'll let you know what happens. Well, this has taken an eternity. It's now the 25th of June. I can't remember what day it was that I applied for a job. I think it's been about three to four weeks since I applied for any jobs. And this is the first one I've heard back from. Borussia Dortmund are offering me a job interview. So let's go to the interview. I'm not going to show you the Lazio one as well, if we get one. Um, but... Yeah, three to four. It's been ridiculous how long we've been waiting. Right. Hello, Damon. We invited you along today so we can put forward our vision for the club and allow you to suggest any alterations for us to consider should we decide to hire you. Sorry about that. I did have to try and hide a burp in between all that. Right, let's get into the interview. I have some reservations regarding the fact that you have never managed in this country. Everyone says that. Can you explain why that shouldn't be an issue? The fact that I have experience in various other countries should hopefully make up for the fact that I'm yet to work here. I think my standing in the game should quell any concerns, to be honest. I'm going with that one. I think I've got good enough standing in the game now. I mean, to be fair to them, Monaco's probably the only club they know about. But your managerial experience lacks variety, in our opinion. I mean, I've done Fukushima, Tokyo and Monaco. What more do you want? Can you tell me why you've only worked with a small selection of teams? I've shown loyalty to every club I've managed and I consider this a good thing. I don't know if I can use the loyalty card because I spent three years at Fukushima, three years at Tokyo and now two seasons at Monaco. I've not really had the chance to manage more than a couple of teams because I'm still in the early... No, I don't want to say that. I haven't felt the need to move on very often. I've enjoyed my time everywhere I've worked. we we'll go with the loyalty one, even though I don't believe it, but why do you want to leave your current job after doing so much good work there? I want to take the next step in my career, and I want that to be here. I think that'll be the one I'll go for. I feel I've taken them as far as I can, and that all parties would be best served by a change of scenery. I kind of feel that is the honest one. I do feel I've taken as far as I can. I don't think I can win the Champions League with Monaco, I'll be honest. I believe I'm in the position to take the positive momentum I've built up recently and use it to hit the ground running here. That's kind of true as well. I'm going to go with that one. We're going to try a different thing. If I don't get the job, I've still got my Monaco job. You're up for a few jobs right now. Not a few. I'm up for two. There's a couple. Are you hedging your bets? I admit it doesn't look good. No, I'm not going to say it doesn't look good. If you want me to withdraw from all of the others in order to have all of the others, there's one other job to have a serious chance of getting the job, I will do just that. No, I'm doing whatever I can to keep progressing. I'm exploring my... I don't know. What one, what one would you choose out of these three? I kind of think probably that one because you're, you're saying, look, this is the one I want. I'm going to say that. The club would be looking for a candidate capable of performing to competition expectations, something our last manager did not do. Are you confident of handling that better than your predecessor? Well, of course I am. I'm the best manager in the world. I'm confident of achieving every target set for me if I get the job. I've got a good record when it comes to meeting expectations. Now, that is the one I want to go for, but I kind of feel you have a better chance of getting the job if you're promising something. I'm going to go with that one. We parted company with our last manager much sooner than anyone would have anticipated. Can you offer assurances that we won't be in for a repeat? Like, put it this way, I am the second coming of Jurgen Klopp. That should get me the job. I have a proven track record of spending considerable time in a job. Mm. I've never once in my career departed after only a brief spell at a club. That speaks like, mm. I'm not concerned about who did what and when. I focus only on myself. No, I'm not saying that. I'm the sort of manager who wants 
to win now, I want short term. No, it's my intention to commit to a long and successful career with this club. I have a proven track record. Of spent. We'll go with that one. How would you feel about working with our current director of football, Sebastian Kell? I'm happy to work with him. We understand the importance of having the right backroom team in place when a manager moves to a new club. So we are willing to allow you to request any changes you would like to make to our current backroom team. As well as the... Op- I mean, I don't want to bring anyone with me. I don't even know these. I'll spend hardly any time with them. I hope to have a complete... No, I won't need a budget yet. That'd be fine. Right, so here's their vision. And vision and values, so to speak. So they want to develop players using the club's youth system, sign players under the age of 23 for the first team, do not sign players over the age of 30. I can get on board with that. Sign players to sell for profit, work within wage budget, grow the club's reputation, spend the original transfer budget. Now that could be a tricky one, as I'm finding out in my Barcelona rebuild. Increase commercial, I hate this one. I don't see how it's up to me to increase the commercial revenue. Informational objectives, maximum one-year contracts for players over the age of 34, minimum four-year contracts to first-team players. They want a challenge for the Europa League, qualify for the Champions League. I mean, that sounds doable. That one there is required. So if we don't qualify for the Champions League, we are getting the sack. Work towards being recognised as the best of the rest, and they're happy with that forever and ever, amen. That all seems perfectly acceptable to me, yeah. If hired, we would expect you to position the team to challenge for the UEFA Champions League qualification. Is that fair or do you think you could do even better? If given a job, I think that competing for the UEFA Champions League qualification is a realistic expectation. Yep. Yeah. Wow. How does a transfer budget of £128 million pounds sounds to you? When can I start? I think the proposed transfer budget is realistic and would give me the funds needed to bring the squad up to scratch if hired. A wage rate of 3.4 million, nearly 3.5. I'd be happy to work with the proposed budget yet. I want this job now. Do you have anything for us to consider should we decide to hire you? I have no request to propose. That concludes the interview. I don't think I'm going to get the job based on some of the things that I've already said. But we have an email here that, 51 years old in the game, is believed to have attended an interview for the vacant Borussia Dortmund job. Bookmaker saw Hills as one of a number of people in contention for the job before news of his interview broke, with some places offering odds of around 11 to 1. I mean, that's not great odds. With odds of 11 to 2 now available, however, Hills has suddenly become favourite for the job after being handed the opportunity to talk to Borussia Dortmund face to face. A spokesperson for Borussia Dortmund offered little, offered little insight into the nature of the interview, only stopping to say that they were considering every option available to them and an announcement would be made in due course. And there it goes to say what I've done previously right let's have a look forward i'll let you know if i get a job interview with lazio and i'll also let you know obviously if we get the job at dortmund i'll see you in a bit now i've got to admit all i saw of this email was our madrid approach and i genuinely thought that was approaching me to give me a job interview as soon as I saw that, I'm like, yep, I'm, I'm going to Real Madrid. I will definitely win the Champions League with Real Madrid. Then I realised it's because they've offered one of my staff members a job as a scout. Okay. But there is other news why I've brought you back now on the 29th of June. It's not because we've got a job interview with Lazio because I've still not heard anything from Lazio. And it must have been a month since I applied for the job. But Borussia Dortmund have approached me. The board requests meeting to discuss manager's future. I'm not going to attend that. But I now have a decision to make because out of the two potential job opportunities, uh, Real Madrid, I've got them on the brain now, Borussia Dortmund or Lazio. The Lazio one, there's every possibility I would have turned it down because I weren't overly infused by it. I was just intrigued. The Borussia Dortmund one, though, from the interview... I really like it. Now, they're offering me £24,000 a week. What is my current contract? It's double what I'm earning now. So I can earn double what I'm earning now by going to Borussia Dortmund. And this would be club four. And I think I'm going to do it. We already know what all of this is about. Let's start the negotiation. And let's see if we can get up to 30 do I want to do 30? No, I don't want to ruin it. Let's let's go to 27. There you go. Sort of like in the middle. Suggest, wow, 
maybe I should have gone to 30. They have accepted three-year contract, £27,000 a week at Borussia Dortmund. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finalised the deal. We exit the talks. The next time I click continue, we are going to be the manager of Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. And that will be tomorrow's video. Please leave a like, please subscribe and please join me for the next leg of our, of our venture on the unemployed journeyman. Thank you.